does change everything on so it, many levels. It does. It's it's very, very powerful. And I know some people sort of think, well, I haven't got anything to be thankful for today, but everybody can find something, even if it's, you know, the sun is shining or um, I had a nice talk with somebody or there's, there's always something that you can find if you look hard enough because it's about changing those sorry Louise. sorry no i was just going to say because if you know as soon as you haven't got that thing then you know you're disappointed and upset could, could be simple as running water you know we just take these things for granted yeah yeah just even you know the simplest things yeah it's, it's amazing so you were you know three so that's is that what you do three things before you go to bed I do and I I tend to write them down in a journal and sometimes I'll I'll get really carried away and come up with way more than three things because I mm. I think three things is the minimum. Yeah. Um but you know if, if someone isn't able to journal them then even just lying there and, and thinking them through in your head is a perfectly good way to start. Wonderful. So there's some real baby steps that you can take right yeah. now if you really feel you are in that black hole in that sludge and that just nothing seems to be going well in your life and there's just no light or, or anything even at the end of the tunnel there are things we can all all do so now now we're going to come to your business because you've had such phenomenal personal transformation experience and you faced all these challenges so how do how do you help others coming from this place you know, of um, really wanting to help. So, so what do you do, Sue? Tell us a little about your business. Um, my business has three different angles to it, I suppose. So I've been, I've been a holistic therapist for over 15 years. So I've done hands-on therapies. So I've very much worked with people for a long time and um, always been interested in energy. And it's, it's just something that's comes to me quite naturally anyway so I love doing hands-on treatments and helping people that way and obviously you you build up such a knowledge of how people work through just doing those kinds of treatments and that then evolved into um, my work as a chronic fatigue specialist because mm -hmm. they go very very hand in hand um and actually relationships can play a huge role in people with chronic fatigue okay do you just want to tell us a little bit about that i'm fascinated uh, i know very little <laughs> about that and I, i'm sure there's some listeners out there right now who are thinking wow how does that work and, and what does that really mean okay so chronic fatigue or me as it's quite often known and mm -hmm. i would also include fibromyalgia in this as well um, they are multifaceted conditions and there are only certain types of people that will succumb. So it's always, pretty much always a type personalities who are, oh. yeah, laid back oh, people. Never knew that. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So for anyone who's listening who may have chronic fatigue, I would probably bet that you are quite a fast paced person you like to get a lot done you um you like to do things really well you tend to pack a lot into a day and think that's completely normal mm -hmm. um very much a people pleaser uh, don't like to let anybody down but also highly sensitive in some respect and you probably feel a little bit like a fish out of water sometimes Mm. interesting so, i really didn't know that yeah. so you and and generally what happens and it doesn't mean to say just because you're an a-type that you're you're going to get any or chronic fatigue it's obviously yeah. there's a combination yeah, yeah, yeah. of factors mm -hmm. um but normally there will have been ongoing stressful situations which is exacerbated by that tendency to want to please everybody else and not be able to say no to anyone and take on far too much there may be other personal issues. So I know for some of my clients, they've actually, their marriage has been a contributing factor to this. For some people, it can be their work environment. It may be that they're living in somewhere that's completely wrong for them on a, on a soul level. Mm -hmm. So if you're a, you know, if you're a, a country person at heart and you're living in the middle of a city, 
you're actually going to be quite unhappy a lot of the time. Yeah. But you perhaps might not realise that's what it is. Exactly. Yeah. Mm, okay. Interesting. And this is how you help people to kind of peel back the layers and, and make these realizations. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So it's very much about, um, as you say, peeling back the layers, finding the missing pieces of the puzzle and helping people understand, um, you know, what's contributed to them becoming ill and helping them become more, more authentic, more true to themselves and living a life that actually fits in well with, who they really are and and this is all done really through changing that mindset is it is this what is this what um helps people with with this chronic fatigue this me is is that really what is it a real mindset issue it's it is a combination so um there are obviously there's a very physical side as well because Mm. quite often the the digestive system is severely impacted um, by long-term stress because it's part of the fight or flight process when we're Mm. when we're very stressed is to shut down the digestive system Mm. and obviously in the modern world we don't tend to fight or flee very much we just have this ongoing daily stress bubble that surrounds us so it it does affect the digestive system it does exhaust the adrenal glands um, and they in turn can affect the thyroid so there's there's a very physical element to it Mm -hmm. Um, but you also have to look at the emotional side and and help people relearn some of their behaviors right and does this all then have an effect physically or or is it treated physically as well as the mindset or does the mindset have such an impact on you physically um no it's a combination so Mm -hmm. generally most of most of my clients um they need sort of nutritional support as well right because quite often they won't be absorbing all their nutrients. Um, Sometimes people have parasites, which can be massively affecting them. So um, the physical side has to be addressed as well as the the emotional. Mm -hmm. Right. I've learned a huge amount already. (laughs) Wow. I really didn't. um, I I, I knew very little about it. I mean, I obviously know it's around and exists and it affects a lot of people, but it's not something um, I've come across you know, in any great depth. So, so that's very interesting. So your coaching is, is this how you would help somebody? Is this one-on-one? Yes, very much Mm -hmm. one-on-one. Um, and my coaching, I also do a lot with women's empowerment because that's where I've come from. And I've, I've learned that, you know, as we talked about earlier, how important self love is and, and self knowledge, um, and so I love working with women one-on-one and helping right. them authentic women being true yeah. to themselves. Okay. And do you see them face-to-face or is this uh, something you do over Skype? I do a mixture. So I see face-to-face and I work over Skype. So obviously I can work with people all over the world. Right. So that's how you, uh, you're you able to help people internationally as well. So. Yes. So yeah. that's amazing. Wow. So how long have you been doing the, the one-on-one coaching? I've been doing that four or five years now, yeah. so um, quite a long and, time. And it's just, and it's just so exciting. I love yeah. doing it. You've clearly got an amazing passion for it. So uh, that's very exciting. Very, uh, yeah, that's, that's very, very exciting. And something um, I've really learned. So if someone is, um, a, couple, a couple of tips here now. If, if someone is really, you know, you get that, that negative cycle you know that that same old story that keeps yeah. coming up um in their mind and and, rep- and they're in a, a pretty negative state but what could be how could they help themselves right now what could they do today i would suggest that they start to really take notice of their thoughts and once you start to recognize those thought patterns it's about um, my, my first step is to recognize what you're doing, recognize that pattern and that cycle. And it tends to go round and round in a cycle because once you start thinking a negative thought, you can then go off onto another one and you just, and then things seem even worse. And then, you know, before you know it, your whole life is just rubbish and that's all you can think about. So take yourself off that loop and just 
bring in one positive thought or counteract one of those thoughts so that you can start to shift your perception. Um, something else that I love to help people do in the early stages is to write down a list of all your achievements because we don't recognize, we don't often give ourselves credit for the things that we've actually done for our own successes. Mm. No, you're, you're right. You're so right there. We're very good at saying what we could have done or what we should have done or um, what we could have done better. Yes, it's, uh, it's very true. Mm. I've been working with a lady recently and I asked her to do this um, after our first session. Mm -hmm. And when we next got together, I said, how, you know, how's your success list? And she said, well, I haven't got anything. So I couldn't really think of anything. Right. And I said, well, I'm sure you can. She says, no, I, I, I haven't. And I said, okay, well. Um, so, so roughly how old is this lady? She's 52. She's 52, bless her. And she doesn't think she's achieved one thing in 52 no. years. No, which is really sad. Yeah, I was going to say, that's, um, yeah, awful. Really awful. But anyway, we managed to come up with quite an impressive list. Oh, <laughs> so, so share a few that you came up with. So, well, we came up with the fact that um, she'd had a very successful career before she'd had her children. Wow, and she just completely uh, dismissed that then? Completely forgotten that. Mm -hmm. Um, she, she's divorced, so she, she's managed to bring up her daughters on her own, which she never thought she would have been able to do if you'd asked her that before the, the event. Yeah, wow. Um, she'd driven to Cornwall, she, which was sort of about a 250, 300 mile trip for her for a holiday, wow. which, you know, she's kind of forgotten that that's, that is an achievement. It is. It, it's huge. Um, and many, many people would definitely not be able to do that, you know, um, especially a woman on her own. No. So it's, it's just sort of shaping things up so that she could start to realise what she'd done. I mean, mm. She passed a driving test. She was driving. That's an achievement. Yeah, it is. Yeah, huge. So how did she feel now she had a few, um, a few things on her success list? And this is only after a couple of sessions with you. Yeah, it was it was great because when we were talking about it, because I said to her, well, I can think of at least half a dozen things that you've done well before before we've even started. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we so we just got talking, and then then she's the her energy start. You could just feel her energy and her mood lifting because she'd say, "Oh, actually, oh, I took my daughter to Spain on my own, and I never thought I'd be able to do that." And oh, no, actually, I did this and I did this. And, and suddenly she was acknowledging all the things that she had done and feeling good about them. Right. So you were able to now she's in a, a higher vibration. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So she's feeling feeling better about herself. So all these, you know, they're, they're small steps, but they can have such a great impact. So people could actually start doing this today. They could get themselves a, a piece of paper or a journal and just really think about your achievements in life. You know, and, and as you say, many of us do drive and, it, you know, just passing your driving test uh, gives you that freedom that we just take for granted. We just get in the car and go. Yeah. Yeah, and I would say, you know, if, if someone is listening who's, you know, who's not having a good time or not feeling good about themselves, definitely, definitely do this it's 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 actually it's it's fun and it's quite exciting mm, well, and once that. you once you start doing it you'll suddenly start thinking of so many more things and it's you get on a bit of a roll with it wonderful so is it this is what you do early on with your coaching i do with with mm. someone who's sort of really stuck then we'll just start with some nice simple techniques and um get them to to start recognizing the more positives that are going on in their lives mm. and when they recognize these they're able to change their mindset so that they see perhaps like like you've been able to see the such you know the challenging situations you've been in you can just automatically now you know take it from a positive stance can't you yeah and and it's just that that reframing helps you 
deal with things so much more easily. Right. Okay. So wonderful. So people can start that.